Hello and welcome back. I thought I would do a really quick video today about flower hammering because this technique to me seemed too good to be true. You don't have to prep the fabric and then you can just hammer flowers onto fabric and they print gorgeous colours and I just thought no that can't be true um, but it is. I've tried and tested it so I thought I'll tell you how to do it. All you need to do this is paper or fabric. Um, I feel like a white cotton fabric will wear the best. Obviously anything with a colour or print you're not going to see the flowers. Um, so just like a nice clean white you're going to get the best colour. Paper, fine. I would go for a heavier paper rather than a thin paper like card almost um, and card definitely will work. You need some kind of like you can use greaseproof paper, you could use cling film, although I've not tried that. Personally, what I used for the next part is a clear plastic wallet. You know, the little people call them slippery fish. I don't know why. Um, or like cellophane bag that you're not using. Use anything like that. And you need a hammer and you need a surface to hammer onto. Don't be hammering dints into your floor or anything like that. I just used an offcut of wood and I also put a piece of craft foam on there just to deaden a bit of the noise. It doesn't really make a difference to the actual process, but just for noise reduction. And speaking of noise reduction, earplugs are not a bad idea. And you will also need, of course, some fresh flowers. Now, I've not tried this with flowers that aren't fresh. But I would say you're going to need fresh because, you know, they've still got moisture in them, which I think is key to imparting the colour on the fabric. Um, and yeah, just for best results, just go as fresh as possible. If you want to cut some earlier, keep them in water until you're ready to use them. We're good to go. Shall we explore? OK, so I'm going to show you two fails first. See that purple flower in the background? That I did straight onto the rug and it's got a rug imprint on it. So don't do that. Second of all, I'm doing a dandelion. Now, these are flowers that don't really have like a clear like petal structure. Um, you know, they don't have nice rounded edges. They're sort of just, you know, chaos. So here we go. I'm laying the plastic on and just hammering it out. And let me tell you, the colour off this, as you'll see in a sec, does come off really nicely. But you don't really get like a nice flowery shape. You just get a big yellow blob. So let's see. So I'm hammering it really hard and that's all you need to do is harder than you think, I would say. This is quite a heavyweight hammer, so it's not taking a lot of strength to do it. And there we go. A lovely yellow blob. The colour, like I said, is lovely, but it doesn't really have any definition. Here's one that I tried of a fern leaf, which did go well, but I needed more hammering. I needed more hammering. Um, but I've seen people have a lot of success with fern leaves. And then look at this, how cool. It really imprints the texture of the fabric onto the leaf, which I just thought was cool. Right, now I'll show you how I did some more successful ones. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I've cut the bottom of the flower off that stops it from laying flat. And I've placed the petals individually um, back in the shape because um, I just find it's easier if it's flatter and it's not got the big back end of the flower sticking up. So yeah, I'm going for two purple flowers and I think purple is a successful colour. However, here you can see I'm trying a foxglove and spoiler alert, this one doesn't come out how you might expect. So I also take like the stems out, anything that doesn't need to be there. We really just want petal. So putting my plastic wallet on again and just hammering going for it. Um, again, the harder and more you hammer, the better results you'll get. You can sort of see, um, as it gets to a certain point, the colour starts bleeding out from under the flower, um, so you'll know if it's done it well. And also, the other thing to watch is be careful that it doesn't move. But as you can see here, look how gorgeous those two look. You can see my five petals that I delicately arranged have moved, but that's okay. And the fox glove just looks like a smooshy mess, so we'll just ignore that part. Um, and here is one that I did of a yellow poppy. Now, I was expecting this to be a bit like the dandelion. It's not got a defined shape, but it's got a great yellow colour. But the colour surprised me so much because look how orange it is. It's so orange. It's not even a bit yellow. 
So yeah, and then another pink flower. I do think pinks, purples, probably the best. Interestingly, I tried a rose petal and that was a bit lacklustre. So I'm not sure really. I think possibly for some reason the thinner petals seem to do best. But look how gorgeous that one is. Oh, that's really come out nicely um, with gorgeous definition and everything. So if you would like to do this yourself, I highly recommend. I have heard from other people saying that the colours will fade over time. So if you wanted to prevent that, A, keep them out of direct sunlight, whatever you're going to do with this fabric. Um, B, you can consider mordanting the fabric, which is something I thought you'd have to do for this anyway, because if you'd want to use natural dyes, then you need to mordant the fabric, which is a process of preparing the fabric um to help it take on the dye better um, and you can google that um i don't know a lot about modern tin which is what put me off doing this at first because i thought you would need it obviously you don't need it but i have heard that yeah they'll last longer um and not fade if you've modernted it so going forward experiment do whatever you like with it um i've seen people lay petals out in like mandala patterns really cute just experiment, yeah, figure out which plants work best. I'd like to see some good ones of leaves. I know the ferns are supposed to work. Obviously mine was not great. It did come out pretty well, but I think I just needed to hammer it more. I'd like to see what happens if you do it on wet fabric. So I, I expect you won't get as much definition because the colour will just bleed. So yeah, so if you try this, let me know. But I hope you've enjoyed this quick little video on this technique that I've discovered. And I shall be back. I'm actually working on a botanical series of work right now. Um, so stay tuned for that video because that's coming next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.